Well, literally, here we go again. A few months ago, I mentioned if the Federal Reserve kept raising interest rates into the face of a recession that was coming, that something would break. And it looks like that finally happened this week out of nowhere. Silicon Valley Bank, the 15th largest bank in the country and the second biggest bank failure since 2008, actually did happen this week. Got the jobs report finally for February. Somehow, it doesn't matter. And all this bad news today for Silicon Valley Bank and everybody that's going to deal with the effects of that is actually the best news for the housing market. Is now the Federal Reserve is, or should be for that matter, done raising rates. And I'll go out and say this is the official bottom to the housing market. Welcome back to This Week in Mortgage, everybody. My name is Sam Batania, your favorite mortgage broker here in California at Mortgage Black in Beverly Hills. Hope you had a great week. All right, well, the Federal Reserve, they broke their toy, everybody. Uh, not saying I'm Nicholas Copernicus, but if you go watch my shows from a few months ago, I said if they kept raising rates into an unprecedented uh, environment, something would break. And back to the Mike Tyson theory of everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the face. Well, the Federal Reserve, uh, they broke their toy, and now this week with the Silicon Valley Bank failure, they got punched in the face. So, Silicon Valley Bank, again, this came out of nowhere. 15th largest bank in the country, failed. Second largest bank failure since Washington Mutual back in 2008, uh, which for us old timers, uh, we know what that was like back then. And it looks like history's uh, repeating itself a little bit. So here's what's trying to be figured out now for everybody that did not live uh, through the housing market and the mortgage market in 2008. Number one, is this isolated to Silicon Valley Bank? Uh, the big terminology that was used in 2008 and 9 that's being used on TV today, two words, contagion and isolated. So the question is, is this isolated to Silicon Valley Bank? I don't think so. We'll find out to uh, how far these tentacles go out. And then is there a contagion? Uh, for other banks and institutions that have exposure, the same type of exposure or direct exposure to Silicon Valley Bank. That is what the markets are trying to figure out today. That is all the uncertainty you are seeing. But we'll talk about this in a real time uh, scenario. Silicon Valley Bank, again, 15th largest bank in the country. Clearly, they have payroll uh, running through their bank. Are people going to get their paychecks? Loan servicing. Are people's loans going to be properly serviced that they have out with Silicon Valley Bank, both business and mortgage and whatever else kind of loans they do? What happens Monday uh, after this big run on the bank where people are literally in line trying to get cashier's checks from SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, to go take to another bank to deposit it? Does the run continue on Monday? We will see, but I can tell you this and so can a lot of other people. This feels all too rem eerily reminiscent of what started in 2008, uh, a little bit before that with New Century that led into Countrywide, then led us into uh, to what happened. So we will see, but the Federal, this is because of the Federal Reserve kept raising rates, they broke their toy, and here we are. All right, now that said, the Federal Reserve, I mentioned they do have a chance for a soft landing. Um, they have one chance left. They have an interest rate decision meeting, I think, next week or the week after. They're probably going to raise a quarter percent because they want to continue on their trajectory. That, that I thought the last time they raised was the most meaningless. If they actually raise uh, rates next week, it's not the quarter percent they're going to raise that's going to affect anything because we haven't even seen the effects of the last four rate hikes because they have to work their way to the system. The market's not going to like it if the stock market is not going to like it if the Fed raises rates because that's going to make the stock market investors think the Fed is out of touch with reality on what's going on. So they probably will raise. The stock market will probably fall, but the bond market will rally off that because as we can see today, that market is working properly as a flight to safety and quality. On to the jobs report for February. Uh, I thought this was going to be the main attraction today. Uh, it is not even, it's a side show in the parking lot at the main circus of this bank failure. Anywho, we got uh, 311,000 jobs created, 225,000 expected. It's pretty good. Healthy job market. 3.6% uh, unemployment, that went up a hair. Uh, and wage growth did slow, which the Federal Reserve likes to fight inflation. I don't like wage growth slowing because people have to care about their jobs, and if they have nothing to lose, the job isn't important, which is not good for our society. So the Federal Reserve has to uh, 
has to basically figure out, and I've mentioned this before, figure out a, a uh, new playbook because uh, right now they are using an old playbook for a new game. And if they think they're going to hit their inflation levels that they have set from yesteryear, we're not in that kind of economy anymore. So Federal Reserve has one chance for a soft landing, and that is uh, – at least if they raise rates, they better come out with a good message after saying that they are conscious of what's going on because the markets will lose confidence in them. All right. How does all this affect housing? Essentially, housing has now officially bottomed. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, the start of this week, we thought the yields were going to go above four on the 10-year treasury and maybe uh, be very high again and hit that 420 level. Didn't happen. This bank failed. <clears throat> Certain Uncertainty is now in the system once again. And the last thing any investors want is uncertainty. That's why you're seeing stocks sell off. And that's why you're seeing bonds rally. People need to go park their money in a, in a safe place. So the 10-year treasury, its function is exactly as it should be. It's a flight to safety and quality. And uh, like I mentioned before, this uncertainty makes it the Fed should be done raising rates. If they, uh, if they want to get off their plan and show the markets they can pivot, they should be done raising rates. But I'll tell you this, <clears throat> if they do raise rates a quarter percent next week, or the week, I think it's next week, uh, this won't be the worst thing in the world for interest rates. <clears throat> Ten-year treasury yield will actually fall, and mortgage rates will actually fall if they do step out on a ledge and for absolutely no reason raise interest rates again, because again, we haven't even felt the effects of it. So... Uh, when it comes to housing, when the Fed raises next week, mortgage rates will drop, which is healthy. And here's a quick note about housing in general. Housing is always going to be safe on a move forward basis because the government showed us that uh, the last few years. When they put forbearance into place and made it so folks did not have to make their mortgage payments because of the uh, economic difficulties, to call them, what were going on a few years back, they also, at the same time, did not make the banks mark their assets to market value of non-performing. So the forbearance is actually the savior of the housing market and actually stimulated the housing market, as we know, in 2020 and 21. So don't ever worry about your home and the system behind your home uh, because the government will not make the banks mark things to market as non-performing assets, and they proved that out during the forbearance. And once again, congratulations, because now the, house, the bottom is now in on housing as the government now, uh, the Federal Reserve, if they raise rates, it's ceremonial. They're going to be cutting rates, as I predicted a few months ago, by the end of the year. I actually can't believe they broke their toy, though. Their econ the economy is the Federal Reserve's toy, and they should have seen this coming. And by the way, what happened to all the stress tests that they do to test the liquidity of all the banks every quarter or whatever it is? Uh, clearly somebody was not at work or consciously at work when they tested out Silicon Valley Bank's uh, stress resistance levels to any market downturn. So that said, this is the bottom of the housing market. This is the top of interest rates. From here, another few days of this, uh, we will see things uh, soften up. And uh, it's opposite day on the markets again. Bad news is definitely good news for housing. Okay, everybody, that is my show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, any mortgage-related questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Friday, again, uh, in L.A., cats and dogs. I used that line a few weeks ago, outside. Uh, we need it. It's good. I'd love to see the sun peek out at some point this weekend. All right, everybody, that is my show. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific weekend.